guys, this is Raisha and I welcome you all back to my YouTube channel. This video is very special for all the students who are eagerly awaiting the opening of the MyTax Global Link student application for 2023. So the website for the student call is open now. So you can head over to the main website and look over the projects which you want to apply to and then on start to make your student application and you have a deadline till 22nd of September. So that's quite a lot of time. So that's good. And in this video, I'll be walking you through quickly about the requirements for the MyTax Global Link program and how to make your resume because some of the students were, I got a lot of DMs about how should they proceed about making a resume. So hopefully I'll be able to answer some of your queries and also how you can select your projects for the MyTax Global Link program. So I'd walk you through the website. I'll open it for you guys and we'll step-by-step step go over all the things that are necessary for you. So this is the main website where you can apply for the student application. So here you will see a link and you can apply for Look over the projects over here and make your student application over here. So you, you'll click it and you'll be headed to this particular page. So here you will see that a welcome page of the GRI 2023 student application. And the deadline has been mentioned. So some of the requirements which you need to keep in mind while applying for this internship. So some of the graduate students were messaging me about whether they can apply for this internship. So here again, I would repeat that this program is only available for students who are full-time undergraduates or are in a combined undergraduate and master program that is a five-year dual degree course. And students who can apply for this opportunity should be nationals from these particular countries. So they have been stated over here. And one of the other requirements that they should keep in mind is they should have one to three semesters left at the time of when they uh, make their application and submit their application. And for if they would be going to the internship next year, so they should have one to three semester left at that time. So keep that in mind. And the other thing is that you should be available for uh, interning in Canada for 12 weeks. And you need to keep in mind what time you would be available for pursuing this internship next year. Anytime between 1st of May to July of 31st. And the other thing is, uh, as I'd mentioned in my previous videos also, the minimum grade requirements, which you have to fulfill for your country or region. So here is the website. So you go back over here and you will see if you scroll down. So if I talk about India, so for AICTE, you need 80% and for SICA, 70%. So convert your CGPA accordingly. If it's a 10 grade scale, you would get a particular GPA. And for some universities, this is a 4.3 GPA scale. So you need to keep that in mind. Some of the documents which would be required from you is a transcript. So it is a transcript is basically a detailed record of the marks that you have achieved till now. So since you have not completed your degree as of now, when you would be applying for this internship and going for this internship, so you have to request for a transcript that is um, a cumulative um, representation of all the grades that you have achieved in all the semesters and the final GPA mentioned after the completion of those semesters. So you can request for that uh, transcript from your academic um, department in your university. And that should be either in English or French. So that is one requirement. So if you are a national from different countries, so you need to get it translated to English or French. And this is a given that you have either you know, fluent oral and written ease in speaking the English language or French. And this, this step is for later on when you get selected for this internship. But if you do not have a valid passport at the time of making this application, 
So if you want, you can apply for a new passport now or do it later on if you get selected for this internship because uh, you would re be required to go to Canada. So then you would have to have a passport and have at least one uh, letter of reference from any of the professors in your university. So those of you who do not know what is the letter of reference, it is also called an LOR, a letter of rec recommendation. And you can request one of your professors to write it for you, or you can frame one and get it signed from um, a professor who you have a good rapport with. So it is to be written out on and printed on the university letterhead and get it signed by the respective professor that you're getting it from. And the details of that professor should be mentioned on that uh, LOR as well. So if you if you click over here about the guidelines for the letter of reference, you would be headed to this particular page and you can see they have listed out some of the requirements that you need to fulfill for getting the LOR. Then we come to a very important step for applying to this internship is a CV. So there's no one sure shot way of making your CV that would get you selected. So there are a lot of different ways in which you can make your CV. But from what I know and what tips I can share of you making a CV is that. So some of the basic requirements uh, that you need to, some of the things that you need to put in your CV is obviously your name, your email ID, your date of birth, and your contact info, your education, uh, which degree you're pursuing, which grade you were in, which year you pursued it in, and what was the percentage of marks you received uh, in that particular uh, qualification. And what I can say is a few of the things that you need to you can put in your CVs some of the honors and awards you re receive like it can be anything from a, a certificate of appreciation to you getting a gold medal in something or you achieving something in uh, olympiads or other competitions so you can add that and if you have had uh, if you have received any scholarships before so you can add that too you should obviously add everything which you uh, which you think can be relevant to the project or make or impress the professor in selecting you for that particular project. And if you have had any prior research experience, if you have any research jour journals published or you have worked in uh, with some professors um, outside of your university, you can add that too. And if you have had any positions of responsibility like in your particular organization, you have been a member or a president and or if you were uh, or if you were part of the student council in your school, anything of that sort. Then the next thing is if you have had any industrial experience, like you have worked with a big organizations and worked as an intern, if you have any of such experience and if you have been part of any college organizations and you have conducted events or been in a position of which can showcase some of your soft skills so you can add that and if you have if you have if you write a blog or you have your own personal website or if you have a youtube channel write that because it shows that you go, went out of your way to do th things differently so you can add that too it can help and if you have any international experience, like you've been to a different country, so that can showcase that you are comfortable working in a multicultural environment. So that can be a plus. Add the projects that you are working on, which are your personal projects or projects in which were included in your course curriculum. So add everything that can be essential for making your uh, CV or making your uh, making you shine out of the rest of the people. So you, uh, that is one thing that I would suggest that you do for your CV. And so, yeah. And this is important that you can apply to a minimum of three projects and a maximum of seven. So obviously, if a maximum of seven of projects you can apply to, definitely go for this one because it increases your chances of getting selected. So now we head over to the projects tab because we need to know how we need to select the project. 
So we head over to the top, click on project. Okay. So you can see over here that there are about 3,116 projects this year. So that's great. You have a host of projects that you can apply to. You can uh, search for projects through keywords and here you can choose a language. I, I won't suggest to go for the host provinces directly because you want to improve your chances of uh, getting a better project. No, so don't make uh, this, don't keep this in mind. You want to go to a certain place. Like I didn't do that. So what you can do is go to the preferred student academic background, choose the ones that you want to apply to. You have a background in, select that one and then click on search and filter. So then you would be able to choose or filter projects more easily, which can cater to your background, your research interests. So here you can see that a project ID has been mentioned. So first of all, while you are going through the project, I suggest that you make a word file and keep a tab of all the projects that you want to apply to. So for that, you need to remember the project ID because that would help you later on to filter out which project you want to apply to. Uh, the project names have been mentioned here. There's a, a little bit of description about the project and the faculty supervisor, host province, host university, the host campus, the language it is being provided in, and the preferred start date. But obviously the projects, um, the professors over there are very sweet and many times they, you can negotiate with them the start date. So that is fine. And if you click on view details, you would um, get a little bit of more description about the project and what is expected from you. So this is the project description, which you saw earlier, the student rules, what is required from you, what is expected from you if you would be interning with this particular supervisor, the skills that you should have, and the project activities that would be mm, required in this project and additional information. So yeah, that's about how you can select the project. Also, once you're done with selection of the projects, so that is how you filter out projects. I would suggest that you spend a lot of time going over the projects because it would open your mind as to what you wanna do and what are the skills that you have and then collectively decide where it all merges and then go for the seven projects which you want to apply to and make sure they um, they're at least from three different provinces so that is one requirement then in the end I, I would like to add that if you have any questions most of them are answered in the frequently asked questions so you can head over here and look over the questions which are commonly uh, students commonly face so they would be answered over here. In the end, I would like to say the main things that you should be doing as of now, because since these applications have just started and, the, and you can look over the projects just now. So spend most of the time going over the projects and make up your mind, which are all, which all projects you want to apply to. Make your LinkedIn profile because it's sort of an online resume and they might go over that. So it won't look very nice if it's not well maintained and it does not have a picture, it does not have anything over there. So I would suggest that you make a LinkedIn profile and make your resume, which is very, very important. Consult with a lot of people, watch a lot of videos on how to make a resume. It can be about one to three pages. I don't know. Uh, it can, it depends on you, what all things that you have done. And Yep, and there was also one, like one of the students uh, asked me, like she uh, she said that she didn't have a lot of um, achievements or the projects that she, uh, she hadn't done much projects. So for that, I would suggest that even if you don't have a lot of projects, but in some way or the other, you can showcase in your uh, resume that you are willing uh, uh, to uh, maybe through your uh, school performance or how in your involvement in school or college or something like that 
and try to showcase them that you're willing to learn and you're eager to learn such things and you're currently working on them. That would be good enough because you might get lucky. Some professors, they don't have much requirements from students, but they, all they want to see is that you are hardworking and willing to, willing to work on their projects. So that would be my final advice as of now. So all the best to all of those who would be making their application for 2023. And I would be getting on with the next video really soon. So bye.